Hello, I'm Dan Genovese, Director of Consulting at Intercom, and I'm joined today by Robert Picconi, who's the co-founder and Chief Executive Officer of Energy Vault. Robert, good to have you with us today. Great, Dan. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Uh, great. Uh, listen, what, what really caught my attention regarding Energy Vault is that Intercom works with a lot of emerging companies, um, and, and, and a lot of them are on the alternative track. And I'm always interested by companies that look to be able to compete uh, with hydrocarbon uh, within their business model. Uh, and, and like I said, we work with a lot. We, we host uh, the Energy Venture Summit with Colorado School of Mines uh, and get to work with a lot of these great companies. Uh, your company struck me as one of those companies that had an opportunity to really uh, compete in the market on a level playing field uh, with hydrocarbon. Uh, so for those viewers, who don't know anything about Energy Vault, uh, why don't you give them some background uh, about the company? Great, thank you. Uh, so we're founded out of uh, Idea Lab in Southern California, and we're focused on trying to solve this problem of energy storage uh, pretty, pretty early on and looking at how we could look at a way to um, essentially uh, economically have storage that you could couple with wind and solar and for the first time to the point you made right here from the start, have something that's competitive or as an alternative to hydrocarbon. Uh, and of course, that's not a small challenge when you look at uh, uh, the cost of storage, which is very, very expensive as opposed to the cost of generation technology uh, in the world. And we uh, you know, essentially uh, looked at uh, gravity. Uh, so we looked at alternative means where time to market was important because we felt that that urgency. So things like chemistry roadmaps and a lot of things you have to go prove are off limits to us. So we we looked at today what's the basis of 90% of all energy storage, which are these large pumped hydroelectric dams that use gravity. Uh, and in their case, they're essentially using the water as the mechanism to uh, you know have that drop and turn motors and create electricity and then they pump it back up. So in a similar way, we looked at gravity, found a way to build a structure so we could build it anywhere, not be um, you know, limited to certain locations that had the landscape. Um, and we integrated some very unique uh, innovation and technology uh, around one, uh, using software to orchestrate the system, uh, and two, looking at alternative materials um, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, the soil and, and very inexpensive materials to avoid concrete as this storage mechanism, um, and then all orchestrated with software uh, to uh, essentially have it now for the first time an ability to, um, you know, to store energy very cost effectively using uh, materials that exist, a lot of technology that exists with some 21st century software and material science uh, now to, to get to market and begin to scale the technology. Yeah, and you're using, I mean, you're using you say gravity, but it's kinetic energy uh, is really what you're what you're using uh, to to store um, that wind or solar generated electricity for use. You know, uh, at an alternate time when the wind's not blowing and the sun's not shining. Uh, so, describe a little bit in, in greater detail how the system itself works using sure, that sure. kinetic energy. Yeah, this goes back to your physics classes, which you might remember, uh, where essentially we're taking a composite weight and taking excess wind and solar uh, when it's not needed. That's turning motors that raise uh, that in our case is a 35 metric ton composite weight made uh, from soil as a default solution. Uh, and it raises it at a height and puts it in position where it is potential energy. So all of the weights at height or when you ride your bicycle up a hill and your top of the hill, that's all potential energy. Um, when the grid needs the, the energy and needs the electricity or when the customer can define with the software very easily, when they would like to discharge it, it triggers the system and the software to lower that weight. That becomes then kinetic energy and then becomes electricity as it turns a, a motor and then discharges that to the grid. So it's uh, it goes back to those fundamentals and, and really what today is 90% of all storage uh, using potential energy and kinetic energy. Yeah, so there's been a lot of talk about how we store uh, renewables like wind and solar. Uh, and a lot of that conversation is focused around, uh, you know, lithium ion batteries. And uh, uh, for those of us who work in the industry or in this area, we know some of the perils associated with how that's mined. <laughs> 
um, you know, whether that resource is uh, uh, vulnerable to supply chain interruptions, which we're experiencing now, uh, and a whole host of things. How, how does how does your uh, technology, your solution, uh, compete and differ from you know? Let's let's just use lithium ion. Sure, that way, great, and it is very topical because lithium ion has been, I think, fifteen years in the development for and trying to get to to larger scale for storage, but. Um, I guess from a competitive perspective, let's start with the supply chain. As, as you mentioned, I think there's three main things, but, but starting with the supply chain uh, where you've got a scarce material and therefore coming from certain parts of the world and how it's mined, um, our supply chain is primarily local uh, and it relies on a lot of existing also companies like um, GE, Siemens, ABB that do the power electronics on these motors. Uh, so uh, number one, we've got uh, a, a global supply chain that exists in all parts of the world uh, and also that is primarily local as we look to build the system. Uh, and that's important also in, even in looking at greenhouse gas emissions from the transport sector. The, the second difference I'd say is on the fundamental storage mechanism. And that's um, for us, that's a composite brick that never degrades over the time. So the, the, uh, the problem with lithium, of course, is just like your cell phone or, or your uh, laptop, is it degrades, especially with more cycling. And because of that, you have to spend more money to replace those battery cells. Uh, and so that really raises that levelized cost. So I'd say given we have a mechanism that doesn't degrade, that really helps our and differentiates our levelized cost. Um, and, and then the third area ties to more of the environmental aspects uh, around safety of the systems and things that have been you know, quite topical just even in the last few months between the, the fires at the Tesla plant in Australia or even here in California, Moss Landing, the big storage facility had to shut down due to a, a thermal runway issue. So I think as you think about lithium as a technology, while I think very appropriate for electronics, obviously for um, electric vehicles, uh, mobility transport sector, and, and even shorter duration, just quick bursts, I think appropriate. But as you get to utility scale and get to really replace hydrocarbon stand to your to your the way you you know you let off our discussion, I think it has a lot of challenges to meet those needs. Yeah, so I guess that, and maybe you, maybe you tipped your hand a little bit there. Uh, who is that customer that that would be best suited for your uh, energy vault storage system? Yeah, it, probably three. I'd say three buckets of customers. Uh, one are the utilities that are looking to just time shift uh, the sun, for example, from during the day when they can't consume all that's generated to those early evenings. Um, and I say to, I'd put in a similar bucket. Uh, some of the, um, the what's called the IPPs or the independent power players. So these are large global players like NL Green Power, uh, which we announced back in June, or even locally here uh, in the US, Nextera in Benergy. So these independent players typically build out wind and solar, couple it with storage, uh, storage and then they sign long-term uh, power purchase agreements with utilities. So I think those are two, I'd say more traditional customers, but given the nature of our technology of it not degrading and the fact that we can do not only the higher end of shorter duration, two to four hour, but we seamlessly do longer duration, th this other bucket of customers are industrials that need power and are trying to power renewably 24 seven because they have a process that goes 24 hours. So think about um, liquid metal plants or desalination plants that are making millions of gallons of drinking water they need a solution to power eight to 12 hours um, through the night. And to do that, you need a longer duration storage, plenty of sun during the day, um, but unpredictable, uh, same with the wind. So um, so I think those industrial customers are an interesting set for us that, that even get into the production of things like um, green fuels, like um, green hydrogen or green ammonia, that you can couple PV with an electrolyzer, but you need a longer duration storage product to run that. So, so all the companies that are making that transition, like mining companies for electrification that are making green hydrogen or green ammonia, they also need that. So, so those are the buckets I'd say of, uh, of customers. That's great. Uh, uh, in a couple of minutes we have left, I, I kind of want to uh, shoot a couple of things at you. One, uh, you had a demonstration facility. Tell me, Real briefly, a little bit about that uh, and, and what's the next step after that demo facility? Sure, yeah, we built and decided to go right to commercial scale with the technology and built a five megawatt system in Switzerland. So that was connected and interconnected to the grid 15 months ago in July, 2020. We used that for testing and to show and demonstrate the technology to customers. And then the next steps came very quickly with the likes of Saudi Aramco and NL that are publicly announced 
of testing that technology with our, our new next generation platform called EVX. So we essentially, the, the next steps got very quickly to signing contracts. We have eight signed already for a little over $350 million. And, and now we're scaling that technology and, you know, across three or four continents of the world. And, and, uh, then you mentioned uh, the sustainable material for that for that uh, uh, that that weight um, that that you're using. Uh, just share a little bit more about that, and then we'll wrap yeah. up. Sure. So, by the way, that's a, a big part of the innovation. I'd say unique to our energy storage is we can not only take soil from the excavation and with a special polymer from Semex that's exclusive with us, we can make these 35 metric ton composite bricks that are the basis of our storage medium. But we can also use coal ash tailings from the mining process, uh, even the, this fiberglass from the, the decommissioned wind blades that today are major costs for companies to have to dispose of, uh, we can utilize that in our process. So that's a, uh, that material science we use um, to do that is a, is a big differentiator for us and a, a, an important part of the environmental and uh, circular economic part of our solution. Robert, thank you for your time today. I love the idea uh, and, and after chatting with you, uh, certainly even more excited than when I uh, read the original information on it um, across the newswire. I know you have plans to go public, uh, and I want to encourage viewers, if they want to find out more information about uh, Energy Vault, uh, to visit your website, energyvault.com. Uh, they can click on the information uh, uh, button there uh, and get more information and, and connect with the company. Uh, but I want to appreciate, I want to thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it, Robert. Uh, and, and, uh, Want want you to have a good afternoon. Great, Dan. Thank you, and I appreciate the time as well. Thank you very much. You, you bet. Have a great day. All right. Take care.